Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkum. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint Adeptus Custodes. If you'd like to support the channel, our Coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Now on to the video. The first colour we're using is Citadel Retributor Armour. And this is to do the bulk of the miniature in gold. So you've got the huge Imperial Eagle at the top here. You've got pretty much all of the Custodes armour and decorations. The plates down the front of the standard too. So there's plenty to be going on with the gold here. They really are cracking miniatures to paint these. They're really, really good fun. They have a lot of detail on them, so the gold armour does take up the vast majority of the paint time on them. But they have so much detail on them that it does look really, really good once you've finished it. So the next colour is going to be Citadel Mephisto on red. We're going to use this to paint the robes they have, or cloaks as well. I'll link up the video to painting the cloaks because you'll be able to use the same effect doing these roby bits down the side here. Also the eye lenses, you want to paint them with my fist on red too. Next we're going to be using Citadel Corn Red and this is going to be to do the strapping on the grip of the Vexilla which is the big double-headed eagle on the top. It's a great looking standard. This bike being so big has tons of detail on it too. I like the little discs as well, very Romanesque down the front of the standard too. Now we're going to be using a little bit of Citadel Karoberg Crimson shade. We're just going to go and put this on the strapping that we've just painted with the corn red. It is a little bit out of order compared to usual. Now we're going to go for some Citadel Araman Blue. You can use this to do all of the gemstones. You can also paint the blade of the Guardian Spear. Quite a few of these gemstones, they also have them on the plate on the elbow armour. Some on the pauldrons too, on those hip plates. So have a good look around when you paint them because they all have them in slightly different places, like some of them have a couple of gems on the shoulders, while others just have the one. I'm going to use some iron hand steel. That belt will work just as well. Just to do some of the tubing, some of the parts on the Guardian Spear and on the Vexilla too. Also you've got that little front faceplate which comes down between the gold sections at the bottom and the eyes above. So you've got that little piece on each side, just slightly off there. And also part of the bulk gun type piece on the Guardian Spear. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo White. This is just going to be to paint the parchments hanging down from the Vexilla. You can have plenty of details on them like we do with the parchments and purity seals on the standard marines. I think having them as white on the custodies really does make a difference. It makes it look that little bit brighter when they're hanging down there. I'm going to use Citadel Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to do the gloves. There's a few little gold plates on them and gold fingers. Little silvery knuckle parts, but you do have large sections of what looks like leather on those gloves with the straps holding them in place. So we're going to give those a coat of Bane Blade Brown so that we can shade them surely. Okay, now we're going to use some Citadel Apothecary White Contrast. We can use this on the parchments which are hanging down from the Vexilla. It's put on quite thick that, you don't have to put it on that thick if you don't want to. It doesn't really matter too much. Once you start reapplying that white, it'll look fine. 
I tend to just lash a load of that on there. And once dry, you can go over it with white. Next up, Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade. We're going to use this to do all of the Iron Man blue, so all of those gemstones. We'll be doing the blade of the Guardian Spear from start to finish a little bit later on, but if you want to, you can paint that Iron Man blue and shade that now. That's not a problem. Now we're going to use some Wildwood Contrast from Citadel. We're going to use this over the Bane Blade Brown on those gloves. We're actually going to give this two coats of Wildwood, all in all. I think I might have just done it all in the one layer here. Just putting it on a little bit thicker than I normally would, maybe. I'm not too sure. We shall see if another section of video comes up shortly. Now we're going for Citadel Drucci Violet, and this is for the robes. This will give them a nice shade, really make those creases and details stand out in there. They also make any join lines or mold lines or anything like that stand out really well. So try not to have gaps like I've managed to get down the side there. You can paint around that so it's not as noticeable, so that's what we'll be doing a little bit later. I'm just going to use a tiny little bit more Carabird Crimson for the grips on the Guardian Spear, which you failed to do earlier on. So you can just give those two little grip parts a little wash of that. Next up is Citadel Agrax Earthshade. So this is going to go onto all of the gold. If you want a more reddish coloured gold, you can use Citadel Reichland Flesh Shade. That will give you that little reddish tint to it. I do like to have that darker brown tint to the gold. Also link up a video with a few different shades that you can use on the gold just so you can see the different types. Now using a little bit of null oil, and this is going to be to go onto all of the iron hand steel sections. Okay, so here's the retributor armor. We're going to reapply this to all the gold. When you're reapplying it, think about where the light is going to catch it and where you're going to have the most shine. And try and give it more of a coat there. I found that because of the amount of filigree and detail and all that kind of thing on it, it took ages to do the gold. That's quite a fun process because of all the different designs and all the different patterns on it. But it does take quite some time to get in all those little nooks and crallies and get the Retributor armor back on those little detailed areas. But once done, it really does look stunning. Now we're going to go for Citadel Liberator Gold. You're going to apply this to about 50% of the area where you applied the Retributor armor, and it's also going to be on the areas that be catching the most light. So think about where the light is going to be striking that Retributor armor, and this is where you want to be applying the Liberator Gold. You see how much of a difference that makes in making it shine a little bit more. And with the next layer, adding that final little bit of shine to it, it really does make the gold armour stand out and look really, really nice. To the final layer for the gold, we're going to add some Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And all we're doing here is doing edge highlights with it. Or if you have a large patch where there will be a lot of light catching, you can use this just to add a final area of shine to that section of gold. But for the areas that aren't really getting as much light, then this is just like an edge highlight with the chrome added to it. It does make it stand out so you get that really nice, bright 
reflective light thing going on. Now we're going to use Citadel my fist on red. I'm going to start working on that cloak and put one little highlight on the eye lenses too. It's also going to be used to do the plume on the top of the helmet. What we'll do is here I'll link up the video for the simple red robes which is using the same technique but it goes start to finish and shows you why I'm highlighting certain areas and things like that. But it will get those robes looking really nice, get those details standing out, make it look like the creases and ridges are catching the light. Next colour we're going to use is Citadel Evil Sun Scarlet. You're going to paint about 50% of the area you've just done using this colour. And you can see as you start to highlight with this, it really does make it start to stand out and make those red areas a lot brighter. That's the kind of effect that you want to get on these robes just to make them really nice and colourful and stand out against that gold. So the final highlight on those robes is going to be Citadel Wild Rider Red. I'll just start shading that and highlighting that out of sight, eh? So this is going to be going over the very edge of all of those creases and ridges. And also if you've got large areas where you've applied the Evil Sun Scarlet, you want to be doing little highlights there too. Maybe a slightly bigger area. But that was out of the way of most of the camera, so I will definitely link up that red cloak video. So now we're going on to Citadel Iron Man Blue, and we're going to do all these little gemstones. So you want to do about 50% of the gemstones, the bottom left side, catching the light. Do that in a slight crescent if you can. If not, just doing it in a straight line across will be fine. You can see here that we're finally doing the blade to that guardian spear. Now we're going to add some white to the Ironman blue just to lighten that up, and then we are going to start highlighting those little gemstones. So you did 50% of the gemstone on the last one. You want to be doing about 25% of the gemstone on this one in the same kind of area as you did. So about 50% of the area you just put the Iron Man blue on. That will give you that nice little highlight on the left-hand side here. I'm using Army Painter Insane Detail Brush here. Now I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous layer. Let's do one final highlight before we add the little spots of light reflecting. So this is going to be about 50% of the area that we've just done with that previous mix. We can see them starting to come together now and looking as though they are catching the light a little bit. Like so. So next is going to be just pure white. We're going to do a tiny thin line on the bottom left hand side of each of the gems and then either put one or two spots of light on the top right and that will just give them that nice almost like reflective quality as the light's catching them. If you happen to get too much light or too much of the previous highlights in a certain area, you can just use some of the previous mixes to cover that up. But do that as you go along. So now we're going to add some Citadel Drakenhof Nightshade to this blade. What I'm trying to do here is to get it to pool around the top of the blade, where it joins onto that kind of Aquila wing. Also into the groove, that concave section of the blade too. Now I'm going to use some Vallejo White. I'm going to start working on those parchments. So you want to leave the shade in the recesses 
and any areas that wouldn't be catching too much light and then mainly making those bits that would be catching the light a nice smooth white colour you've got lots of nice creases on this so you can do some quite nice work on the shading and things like that Now working on the gloves, we're going to use some Thondia Brown from Citadel. You're going to start working on the highlight areas. You want to leave some of that contrast in the recesses and some contrast areas on the smooth sections because it does give it that nice kind of leathery almost shine. I do you think the Wildwood, a couple of layers of Wildwood over Bane Blade Brown gives a nice dark leather colour. While the snake bite leather gives a nice lighter shade. There will be two videos of those coming up in the next couple of weeks. So it's Citadel Balor Brown now. This is mixed with the Thondia Brown to give you a bit of a lighter shade. And you're just going to do a little bit of highlighting with that. Maybe about 50% of the Thondia Brown that you just applied. Finally, we're going to mix a little bit more Ballo Brown to the previous mix and just do one final edge highlight on the gloves. This can be used like we do on the pouches and the other videos where you're doing the rough strokes. You can do horizontal on the vertical, vertical strokes on the horizontal. I'll just give you that rough scuffed look. I try to keep them relatively smooth and not as scuffed as I would do on the normal Marines these guys I think they'd be a little bit more presentable now we're going to use Citadel Iron Hand Steel once more we're just going to touch up all the areas that we shaded earlier on so that it's a bit more gleaming a little bit more shiny Next we're using a little bit of Vallejo Black. We're going to use this to do all of the joins between the armour plating on the Custody. So there's sort of like, looks like rubber seals between the battle plate. We're also going to use this to do, as you can see, the casing on the bolter attached to the Guardian Spear and also the body of the Guardian Spear itself. Once you start applying this to it, you'll see that all the details of that bolter really start to stand out. I'm going to use some Vallejo German Grey just to highlight all those areas that we just used the black on. That's going to be like top surfaces, a few little bits down the side as well, about 50% of the side when you do that. Then when we use a little bit of Mechanica Standard Grey in a moment, that'll highlight all those edges make all those edges stand out so this is the Mechanica Standard Grey from Citadel as I say this is going to be edge highlights and highlighting all those little bolts and rivets and things like that too when you use this just to do the edges it just makes them stand out a little bit more without making the actual bulk gun too bright or too shiny just gives you that little highlight that you need to get those details to stand out now i'm going to use vallejo black and start detailing the parchments so again, I'm using the Army Painter Insane Detail Brush here. Just trying to get a few little squares in the corners and do a few little letters in it and stuff like that. And then do some horizontal lines to represent text. 
and you can do like little triangles with a long top piece and it's slightly going down to the base of the triangle and two little sticky up bits in the center of the top to do a little aquiller on there I also add like a little sisters of battle symbol and stuff like that to it as well so now just adding another layer of Drakenhof nightshade to this blade just to darken up that top part where it joins onto the aquila wing I'm going to start working on this getting that looking nice and sparkly so first we're going to use citadel araman blue and you're basically going to use this dragging the brush away from that darker section dragging it away so that you get the most paint on the edge and make that a lighter color so that you have that kind of dark to light blue around that concave section of blade and you also want to do this to a slightly lesser extent on that slightly raised section of blade at the top where it joins the aquila now i'm going to use vallejo white and mix that with the araman blue just to get a slightly lighter shade and we're going to start highlighting those little bits of lightning that went on with the previous Araman blue layer. I'll link up how to do the lightning effect for power swords because it's pretty much the same thing that I'm doing here. So I'll link that up just above. I'm going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix and just do a little bit more highlighting to that lightning. So the areas that I'm highlighting with this are the edge of the blade and that edge which runs around that concave section of blade. Also where any little bits of lightning join together or join the edge of the blade and giving that a little bit of a highlight there too. This just makes it look like the bits where the lightning crosses over and joins together is that little bit brighter, so it's a bit more powerful. So we're going to add a little bit more white to the previous mix once more. You can see that lightning effect coming along nicely there. Using such a thin brush you do get a better effect than I would usually use the Army Painter Wargamer character brush for this. But had the insane detail brush for ages and never really used it but i've started using that to do some techniques on these just because it does mean that you can get that slightly thinner line and finally we're going to use a little bit of vallejo white just to do some little tiny highlights at the center of those lighter parts and also to do a few little sections of edge highlighting on the blade and on the details on the blade too Now we're going to work on the strapping on the handle. I'll be doing a start to finish video of this. It takes a little bit longer than you see in this video. But it's worth putting the effort in because you can, with three colours and a shade, you can get a nice little effect on the strapping. So basically each part of the strap has a concave in the middle of it and goes from the front to the back, or the back to the front, depending on how you're looking at it. So you want to be doing the raised section at the top and the bottom of the concave with the corn red leaving that little section of caribou crimson in the middle and also either side of it where it joins onto the other straps so now i'm going to use a little bit of citadel wasdaka red and you're going to paint a little thin line at the top of each of those corn red sections this starts to highlight it when you look at it from the front and the back you'll see that the straps sort of slot into each other almost like plaits so you want to get the top of each of those sections highlighted and that makes those kind of plaits stand out when you're looking at it from the front now i'm going to use citadel pink horror to do the final highlight on this so once again using the insane detail brush 
We're just going to do a tiny little bit at the top of each one of those. Like so. And this is the finished Adeptus Custodes. Really happy with how it turned out. Love the cloak, love the gold armor. Just really, really nice figures all in all. Very happy with how he turned out. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media, link below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content, please consider supporting us at either our coffee or Patreon pages, link below. Thanks very much.